Issues and Tissue, a contemporary magazine program that engages and discusses issues of development within and outside the state. The program brings to the fore raining topics like education, politics, agriculture, just name it, while we examine the nitty gritty of the issue in focus. Join me, BC Akbaida, every Wednesday on African Independent Television, AIT, for an exciting time. Issues and tissue. If we can think it, we can discuss it. There is an increased level of awareness with regards to the complex relationship that exists between development and the quality of the environment. However, Edo states, like many others, continues to experience environmental problems like desertification, land degradation, soil erosion, flooding, and indiscriminate dumping of refuse. The efforts of the Edo State Waste Management Board in eroding these problems and achieving environmental sustainability is the subject of discourse in this interview as we sit and chat with the Managing Director, Edo State Waste Management Board, Charles Imaragbe, to know what the board is doing in cleaning up Edo State and achieving the state governor's vision of making Edo State the cleanest state in Nigeria. <music> Issues and tissue. If we can think it, we can discuss it. Thank you for speaking with us on um, waste management system in Edo States. Now let's start with the project Clean Up Edo Initiative. Tell us what it's about and to what extent have you been able to achieve the mandates? Thank you for um, coming by. Um, the Clean Up was set up by Mr. Governor himself um, in the early parts of his, uh, of his government. Uh, so it was, it was at a time when there were a lot of challenges surrounding waste management in the state. We had a couple of heaps of refuse here and there. And there was the intention to deliberately turn, uh, you know, to focus on sustainable environmental development in those state. And of course, waste management is key in that, in, in that drive. So we came up with the idea of having a team that would drive that process. Uh, and the team was set up a uh, uh, named Project Clean Up Edo. Uh, I started with um, a couple of activities, meetings, um, for, um, workshops were held, and we, I uh, mean, the, the, the person of the, uh, the Secretary of State Government himself, such a high office, was the one heading that um, uh, initiative. And we had commissioners and heads of MDAs that were relevant to the course of environmental uh, cleanliness and sanitation. And of course, the Illustrated Management Board, as the activity a governing agency, was the the forefront of all of this as well. So a couple of these initiatives, like I said, were to you know to, to keep the city clean and green. So we set out to do a couple of activities back then. We started out by you know visiting the government visited a couple of uh, markets and uh, the dump sites, a couple of other places along the streets where you had heaps of refuse or challenges who were here and there in terms of uh, waste management and environmental sanitation. And then uh, we went to those places, cleared up the dump site, pushed all the waste into the, you know, into the, uh, the, the, the compound and raised perimeter fences around them, um, rehabilitated those sites. And then um, also we carried out um, uh, clean up exercises in marketplaces, brought down the um, you know, long standing heaps of refuse you know, in those places, in a number of markets and other places in the city centre. Um, this was not all. We also carried out um, raids on places where you have people trading illegally on the streets. The fun life, you know what Benin used to be, it was such that you could uh, hardly drive through without having terrible traffic in those uh, bottleneck areas. Actually, in the city centre, it was really, really not a good sight. Many people may have forgotten now because everything seems to be, uh, it seems to be clear and clean now. You wouldn't remember how it was in the past, but of course we have pictures to show how it was in the past. And to what uh, all of this art uh, with a strategy that we have to come out at night, and I must, I must commend the person of the Secretary of State Government who led that operation, the, 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 um, the foremost operation in, in this uh, kind of activity which we did at night along with the Ghost Street. Uh, I can remember how much we all mobilized to site and we cleared up, cleared up all of those places of all the shading and um, uh, materials that people were using to trade in those places in those days. It is, it is, um, it's important to underscore this because before now it looked like it was impossible to break those strongholds uh, because many times um, in past uh, years those um, attempts were made 
to remove those uh, things put in the backwards. But in this case, with the question we, we did in, in, in those days, it was successful and the people who applauded it, they were very happy with it. And that was one of the reasons why Mr. Governor ended the name week and see because people just woke up and they saw that the place was no longer where it used to be. It was clean and everybody was happy about it. And also, I can tell you about Lagos Street and um, Ring Road, you know, if you know the King Square, Ring Road is the public center of the city in Benin. Um, you know, Obama Market area, um, New Benin, Third East Circular, uh, Santana Market, or Red Benin, just to mention a few, so we cleared up a lot of these places. And then we also carried out a lot of sensitization activities, went to the places to, to notify the people, I mean, to keep the people abreast of best ways to handle waste on. Uh, and how to you know properly dispose waste. So a couple of these things were carried out, and we also involved ourselves in um, you know vegetation control, where we, we grasses were cut in places where they were overgrown and stuff like that. So it was a wide range initiative, and which uh, um, which um, uh, set the stage for where we are today. Okay. Now you made mention of um, sustaining the environment. Yes. How is the waste management board? ensuring um, the achievement of environmental sustainability. One of them, although the, we are trying to sustain the momentum in terms of the operational activities um, we, we, we were doing, we started already. Um, beyond that, we are also carrying out other activities, like I talked about the clean and green, mm -hmm. maintaining lawns, and going about clearing grasses in, uh, maintaining lawns, clearing grasses in places where we have our gold weed. We also have the, the um, the sweepers, the street sweepers. Mr. Governor massively uh, you know, engaged a number, a good number of sweepers in the thousands. Uh, they, and they are spread across major roads in Benin City where they sweep and they, they sweep these roads on a daily basis. Early in the morning, they come out, they sweep the roads. And we also have an um, evacuator whose responsibility is just to come out early in the morning, take those refuse that have been gathered by the sweepers. And the intention is also to prevent all of these things from going into the drainage and clogging all of this and clogging the drainage, which is not good for, for environmental sustainability. Um, so apart from that, we have also licensed some companies in that to take plastics because the thing is, you want to ensure, you want to protect the environment. One key thing you have to note is the pl uh, plastic. They are enemies to the environment and you must take them out. The blocking of drainages, primary thing you will see there, you will see plastics. So we, we are developing, we are still working on all of these, but, but already we have licensed a company who is doing um, plastics, uh, crushing of plastic, exactly, and then um, pilletizing. So that one is there, and we are, in the next few months, we are going to expand the scope, we are bringing in more of um, such a um, consortium that we're taking the plastics away, and then we'll be turning them into other products, and probably selling them or recycling them into bags, waste bags and stuff like that, nylon bags. So we have spread out to other parts of the, the state. Um, so the, the focus is to have regional offices in, in Edo North and Edo South. Uh, at the moment, we have set up zones in, in some of these other cities in these other cemetery districts like Mekuma, Mirua, in Aochi, in you know, those other axes. We've set up zones in those places, and th thankfully, the local government are collaborating with us in all of these. And we're already setting up offices in those places before long. We see a lot of those printing up. And um, so we have licensed waste collectors, waste managers who are working in these places. And we're working very closely with the local government to see, uh, to dump site provision in all of these places. And it is working out very well. Okay. Uh, now, what mechanism do you have in place to monitor the waste managers for effective and efficient service delivery? Ah, right. So that is one thing that we, we, we know that uh, is very, very important because uh, so our, our duty of care, first of all, is to, to the public to make sure they are safe. Right? And so it has to say that we must make sure the waste managers are doing their job. Okay. So apart from having what we call logbooks that um, the waste manager must sign when he goes out to work, he must get the client to sign when he goes out to work, we are also designing a scheme where we are able to track waste management or waste managers on the field. So with that, we are looking to, we, we, we have a, a technology provider who is who has a device, a tracking device, where it is tagged on each house. We've already run the pilot, it was successful. We're looking to scale up now with the um, governor's approval. So it is such that that bar is, is, is tagged to every house 
And as the waste manager goes out to work, he's, he's mandated to scan that bar anytime he he works. So just by merely scanning it with your with his phone, which has an app, it will send messages in three directions. So the waste manager is the owner of the company itself because he has his people on the street, street working in see what I mean. So but he's back probably in the office or elsewhere doing so he gets a message. So he is able to, you know, to determine you know, to, to ascertain where his his truck is per time. You know, every time he knows where his truck is. The household, which is very important, the resident gets a message as well. So he's notified that oh, your waste has just been taken. Okay. okay. How how does the resident get this message? By text message. So text message are just sent automatically to three directions. So he gets a message to notify him that his waste is being taken. And then the board. We have our own dashboard, we receive the message and we can also view and determine where the waste manager is at that time. So the good thing about it is that with that you are able to determine where the waste manager is and by that you are able to also determine where he has not gone to. So when there's time for enforcement, you can tell, you can they just you, you can you are not going on a directional enforcement, you are not doing a wide goose chase. So you know who has not paid or who has not been serviced and you know how to call the waste manager to order. And for the client is able to also make a complaint. If it is not true that the waste manager has picked his refuse, he can see it. So, but by just by notifying him, he knows, okay, my waste has been taken. But if it's not true, he can then complain because he can see that's not been taken. So, there's a channel for him to complain therein. And it's also very important in terms of litigation or in terms of payment because the text message that will come to him also states what his dues are. The waste has been taken, you, you have to pay to transfer amount and stuff like that. Okay. Now, um, talking about um, technology and what have you. What are your efforts towards um, digitization of the waste management system in those states? Right. What we just talked about is one of our efforts in terms of digitization. But beyond that, we're also providing other payment platforms for the clients to be able to pay. Because one complaint they, they always have is that they don't want to go to the bank to make um, payments. So we have rolled out POS. Again, this is on the trial, the pilot scheme. We have test. We we had to configure the. Uh, the, those uh, devices to read the kind of data that we want them to read because it's a specialized one, it's not just any kind of um, POS that they can just take off the shelf and start using. So we have to configure, to configure it up to the um, level that we needed it to be. And um, so we're running that now with a couple of zones and we're seeing the high is coming up and the people are loving it. So the intention is now to get more of it and spread it across all uh, the zones. With that, the customers are just able to, to pay. So the client comes, sorry, the waste manager comes, takes the refuse, and you just give them the POS and they slot in their card and they pay to make payment easier. Beyond that, we are also coming up with a solution where people will be able to pay even with USSD code. We are working on that. It's not yet there, but we are very close to hitting it. So we want them to be able to pay using USSD code because uh, payment is key because if the US manager does not get his payment, he is not able to continue doing the job. You see what I mean? So, and the client doesn't want to go to the bank. So as much as possible, we want to make it easy. We want to bring the bank to you. So if you're able to use, which is the, which is the most um, granular level, you know, if you're able to use USSD code to pay, I mean, everything becomes very easy. Okay. Now, how is the waste management um, system improving the economy? You know, of course, affecting the lives of people in terms of providing employment yes. and then um, revenue generation for the government. Uh, so um, I can remember that the, uh, when we really came on board, the revenue uh, the state was making from waste management was in the range of 40 to 54, there about a million a year. Yes, um, that was in 2017, 2018. But in the last year, um, 2021, we made 144 million trying to think about of that and um, I can tell you that we, we could have made more than that. The previous year, the year before that, one of those years, I think we made a bit more in the because, because there was COVID, that's what affected our activities. But I can tell you that we made 144, you can imagine, continue, consider from 40 or 44 to 144 in a couple of years, maybe three or so down the line. So that's to let you know how we are trying to grow the revenue stream in terms of waste management. And beyond that, we also, if we also do, um, Thanks to Mr. Governor, all you know, all appreciation must go to him for the number of persons he has brought on board in terms of people that are doing sweeping. You can, you can, you, you, you will do that. That also helps people, you know, to take them away from the street. It's also putting food on their on their table. So it's a huge number, over one thousand, one you know, one thousand three or, or so of the uh, uh, hundred of the sweepers that we have. Um, and with the intention, with the plan that we have to um, do waste recycling. 
you can be sure there's going to be a, a whole vista of opportunities opened up for people to um, to get employed. We are very close to doing getting some of these uh, recycling plants by talking to our investors. So there's a lot that can come, even in terms of sorting of refuse in material recovery facilities. By the way, by the way, we are looking to also have those kind of facilities. Where people, just by sorting waste, it's, it's, you are, we are creating jobs. So these are some of the plans that we have in terms of that. Okay. Now, what forms of intervention did you have during the COVID-19 lockdown? Right. So when the COVID um, came, it it such that it weakened waste management uh, operations uh, because people could. One thing is that people became economically weak; they were not able to pay for refuse evacuation as much as we want them, and um, they were more at home. So the more they sat at home, the more refuse they generated. So for us, the work doubled, and the revenue was not coming in. So we had to really strive hard, kept pushing our waste managers to continue to work. And the market women, they were also hit. You know, at that time, because to maintain um, social distance, the, the state government decided that those markets, given their nature the way they are, they, there was need for them to be moved. So they were moved to some designated school compounds um, so that they can achieve the spacing that they needed. So when they were moved, at that time, given the situation of things, the government then directed that, okay, we should not collect revenue from them. Revenue should not be. By the way, you know, local market management is under the local government and administration, right? So, by that time, the governor then said that okay, you know, revenue should not be collect, collected from, from from the market women, and that we should intervene. So during that period, we were carrying whenever now the waste management board who, who was then responsible for removing refuse from all of those markets that they moved to schools. So we're removing refuse from those places every day, cleaning up the markets every day. We had environmental sanitation officers and volunteers. You know, so we're moving the refuse as well on a daily uh, basis. So, so that intervention happened. Well, the state government also released some palliatives in terms of, um, um, apart from the palliatives that were released, you know, we also released them um, um, for PPEs, especially things like nose masks for the waste managers. Just a bit was released, but it was to cushion the effect on them in terms of, because we didn't want them to also be exposed to yeah. COVID. So some of those things were released to also help. Issues and Tissue, a contemporary magazine program that engages and discusses issues of development within and outside the state. The program brings to the fore raining topics like education, politics, agriculture, just name it, while we examine the nitty gritty of the issue in focus. Join me, BC Akbaida, every Wednesday on African Independent Television. AIT for an exciting time. Issues and tissue. If we can think it, we can discuss it. Tell us some of the challenges you, um, you know, face during the course of your opportunity. One of them is, I mean, the unwillingness of um, people to pay for waste evacuation. Uh, it is not good for business at all. They should understand that waste management is business for the players. The, the, you know, the, those that have been accredited to carry refuse, they are private companies. So uh, it's business for them, they have invested in it, and they also have a right to recoup from their investment. And service has been rendered, I do not see reasons why you would not want to pay. So we we'll, we'll always keep them joining people, imploring them to make sure they pay. But that's the only way you can keep it running. So that low compliance. And then sometimes you meet a client to tell you I don't have refuse which we don't consider to be true because there's not a single human being living that does not generate refuse. And if you were to go by statistics in terms of waste generated per capita per head, that's per person, you know, it, it ranges between, let's say, 0 0.5 to 0 0.65 kilogram. So you can imagine if everybody is expected to generate that, that quantum of refuse and you multiply it by the, the population in the land, then you can tell the quantum of refuse that we generate. So it's, um, a, that's one challenge that we have. Another one is um, that of, um, I talked about unwillingness to pay, right? Okay. Um, mm -hmm. No compliance, no wanting to release refuse or saying that they don't have refuse. And another challenge in, is in discriminate dumping of refuse. For me, this is even the killer because uh, people will just sometimes carry their refuse and dump it on the main road, like the sidewalk or on the median, uh, probably because they want to evade payment. Uh, for refuse evacuation. So I, I think it doesn't tell very well at all because it, it, it messes up the street and gives us a bad image 
and it's uh, most of the time they come out to do these things at night nowadays and it's not very good. The waste management board goes around every day to remove this refuse and by morning you see huge piles again on, on the road. So for us that is a, is a no no one we must be people to disease from doing that sort of thing. thing. Okay. Now, uh, before we talk about the issue of indiscriminate dumping of refuse, uh, first of all, how well do people patronize the waste management board in those states? Well, there's a, there's a good group of people, there's a good number of people who, um, once their waste managers are not come, they are calling because they are very eager to what the waste taking away. Nobody wants to live with refuse. So, uh, But I would say that um, there's still a large chunk who are not fully keyed in. Uh, there's the group that only because of um, enforcement and reminder, yes, they are in the loop. But we want that voluntary compliance on everybody's part. So we are believing that with the reforms that we're looking to put in, that more of the people will, will, will come in. About the indiscriminate dumping of refuse, mm -hmm. how do you plan to effectively tackle that issue? Uh, this is a, a problem that we've been managing for some time now. Apart from carrying out intervention, removing the refuse from those places, those red or black spots uh, where they dump this indiscriminately, we have um, been talking with some sister agencies, security agencies, and government as well. We, we would have to man those spots, whether it is day or just at night, we would have to man those spots and apprehend people that keep doing those things and take them to court for prosecution and then um, we are also designing measures to um, you know to do sensitization which we've always been doing with, you know for the people to be aware of the dangers of doing those sorts of things so that there is enough sensitization nobody is going to feign ignorance and going forward but we must be able to carry out some sort of enforcement to, to deter people from continuing to dump the refuse and discriminate on our main roads now tell us, are there legislations backing your activities? Well, yes, we have legislation backing. And uh, we also like to believe that some of the laws that come from the federal um, are, are such that can be used here and uh, domesticate them and get them to practice here because some of them are really beneficial to what we do here. And one of, one of such is the EPR, the Extended Producer Responsibility. The other time we gathered producers of these nylons and plastic to have that kind of a meeting where we would be able to mop up um, plastics and those toxins from the, from the environment. And we're relying on the EPR to be able to get that through. Okay. Now, how do you um, punish, let me use the word punish, um, those who may not want to um, you know, dispose of their waste um, properly? We have, uh, thankfully, to the, thanks to the um, law enforcement the Nigerian police, who also have officers that work with us in that direction. So when people have refused to, to yield, we always send them things like um, notices, you know, how you know, violation notice, um, you know, reminder, payment reminder, and stuff like that. So we we'll go through a whole gamut of uh, reminders and notices before it gets to court, court some months, and from there, you know, it will be uh, a judgment for the court to make. And we also have channels where people are able to send uh, complaints to us because we have uh, uh, customer care lines which are open to of them 24-7 and we have a WhatsApp line where you can also drop messages and you can write to us or visit us and the highest you take for the eight hours we have responded to. Um, like you said, cleanliness is next to godliness and um, the environment we live in today is for us, uh, we consider it a, a, um, an inheritance we got from our parents, from our, uh, our ancestors, from our four years. And for us, it's something that we owe the next generation. It's a loan that we must pay to the next generation. So you must protect it and bequeath it to them in a habitable manner so that they can live in it. If we squander the environment today, our children will have no place to live in. If our forefathers squander the environment, we won't have anywhere to live in. So while they are thinking of um, what, what, you know, dumping waste indiscriminately, they should think about the fact that they may be harming the environment that their children will live in. They say politicians, the good politicians think, think of the next generation and not, not of the next election. But I would idea to add that true leaders think of the next generation 
Yeah. That was a chat with the managing director at those state waste management board, Mr. Charles Imariagbe. Yeah, I believe it was an insightful one. And of course, as citizens, we hope you know to key into the governor's um, dream and vision of making Edo State the cleanest state in Nigeria. Of course, through the Clean Up Edo Initiative and the Green Initiative. My name is Nosare Me Uso and until we meet you again, same time, same station, stay safe and have a wonderful day. Issues and Tissue, a contemporary magazine program that engages and discusses issues of development within and outside the state. The program brings to the fore raining topics like education, politics, agriculture, just name it, while we examine the nitty gritty of the issue in focus. Join me, BC Akbaida, every Wednesday on African Independent Television, AIT, for an exciting time. Issues and tissue. If you can think it, we can discuss it. <laughs>